Okay, so we're going to take a look at our first exercise and how we go about creating a website in Adobe Flash. All right, so with Adobe Flash, we can do a couple, we can do a lot of different things. First of all, we can create animations that we place within our website, but we can also build an entire website from the ground up. In this next series of videos, in this series of videos, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. How to create a website from the ground up. To begin, we create a new file. We're working in ActionScript 3.0. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to set the size of our stage. Well, actually, the panels that we want, that we're going to be working with are the timeline, the tools, the library and the properties. So you can see I have all of these opened up. Okay, now we are going to begin. So where do we want to start? We want to come into the properties panel. We're going to change the size of our document. I come to edit. Now, again, this is a place where things are are, are changing. I know since I started working on in web design, when I first, the first course I taught in web design, the standard, um, size to work was 800 by 600. That is no longer the case. Um, they say that now it's 1024 by seven something. And the last uh, article I read, the numbers are getting even higher. But we're gonna actually work in this one right here. And we're gonna make this actually 1000 pixels by 600. Okay, we'll keep it a little bit on the smaller side. Again, we wanna make sure that our um, what we what we create is going to be viewable on most people's monitor. So we click OK. All right, and there we have it. I'm going to zoom in. I have my stage all ready to go. All right, now what we're going to do next is we're going to create a navigation bar and we're going to create buttons. All right, so let's actually come to our layers and let's actually name our layers. I'm going to name my first layer nav bar. And actually, let's begin with the nav bar. Then we'll do the buttons in a minute. Uh, we're gonna when we end this, we will have three layers. Now, what I did was I just dropped my um, nav bar into my tools, and actually, you know, that's really not a problem um, for right now. Okay, so here goes. Um, I am coming on in here. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. Okay, and I can see on my properties panel how this rectangle tool is looking. I have my fill and my stroke and all of this info. So again, the properties panel, the info on the properties panel changes depending upon what you have selected. I can house these two together by just taking it and dropping it in like so. All right, so I'm going to begin and I'm going to, uh, I can click and choose a color, any color that I'd like. I'm going to choose a nice bluish green kind of color. I tend to like the same colors again and again. Can't help it, I guess we all do. So I'll click OK. All right, so there's my color. I'm gonna keep my stroke turned off and I'm going to just draw a rectangle at the top. I can move this later on um, and there we have it. Now, I'm gonna come in here and I wanna change the width. The width, I'm gonna put at 1000 and my height, we're gonna keep the height at 60. So there we have it, 1000 by 60. Now, what I wanna do, and we talked a bit about the library panel, actually in other videos, I've spoken about the library panel, and I wanna talk about the library panel again, because it is an important panel. What we can do in the library panel is we can take the symbols that we create in our Flash projects and we store them there. Now, what's great about this is we can take these symbols and we can use them over and over and over again. There's a lot of flexibility with these symbols that we're going to be working with. We can also come in and change the effects of these symbols through the properties panel. Okay, so right now this is not a symbol. This is just a rectangle that was drawn. It is actually a drawing object. So if I click this and come right here and I come to properties, I can see that this is a drawing object. I want to change this. And what I can do, this is select that I can come to modify and I could convert it to a symbol. Um, as I've done in other videos, but there's even another way to do this. I can take my rectangle and I can drag it and I can drop it right in there. Okay. Now I'm going to name this nav bar. And what I want to do is I'm going to make this one. Let's just keep this as a movie clip and I will click. Okay. There we have it. Now, 
let's say that we have um, this top part and we want to create a footer. Well, it's very easy to do. All we have to do is drag, come right to here and I can drag out. Now I have another instance of this nav bar. I can take this, I can put this into place. What I can do also is I can come into the properties panel and I can change this. I could change the height to, let's say, 40. Um, and I can come on in here with the properties panel and I could change the color effects. I can do a lot of different things. I could change, make it a tint of that color and we'll just leave it at that for now. And we'll bring this on down, even maybe a little bit from the bottom. And there we have it. We have a, a nav bar and we have um, a footer. All right, let's create a new layer and let's start making some buttons. New layer. Okay, and we're gonna name this layer buttons. Okay, with flash, whatever is on top will be what will be viewed on top. So there we have it. Now again, you can see that your properties panel changes depending upon what it is that you are creating. You can see we have this reference to frames in here. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag, get my uh, rectangle tool, my drawing rectangle tool again. And I'm gonna drag this out. And actually, let's change the color of this. And we can come in and maybe we want to make it lighter. Click OK. All right, and there we have it. Now it's just a little bit lighter, not that much lighter. Let's click off and see. Yep, we can see it. There it is, uh, a bit lighter. All right, actually, and you know what? Maybe we want to even change this a little bit more. Um, so if we come into here, make it just a tiny bit lighter. Okay. There we go. All right, perfect. All right, so now this is the next thing that I've created. Let's actually take a look at the size of this. Here we have it. We can say this is our button. Now, you may already know what we need to do to move forward. We need to actually take this button. We need to actually turn it into a symbol. And from when it's a symbol, then we'll be able to apply navigation and interactivity to this. So once again, I could do this one of two ways. I could come up modify, convert to symbol. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this and I'm going to drag it and drop it into the properties panel and we'll name this button. And actually what we want to do is we want to change the type to button. We click okay and there we have it, our button. Now, I wanna pull out five more buttons. One, two, three, four, five. So here goes, we click, we have one, two, three, four, five. Now I can take these, I can move these into place, move these into place, and I can move these around really however I would like to, which is great. Um, another thing that you might want to work with a little bit, and if you've worked with Photoshop, and Illustrator and InDesign of the other Adobe programs, you'll be familiar with um, working with rulers. Uh, you can pull out guides. So all you need to do when you pull out a guide is um, <clears throat> turn the rulers on. I went to view rulers and then I can click and I can drag out these guides. Okay, I'm not gonna do that right now, but I just wanna show you what it would look like. So I could come in and, and I could draw these and um, use them. I can also, what's great with the guides is you can, um, a lot of times I believe you can snap to grid, even you can snap to guides, which is great. If you're drawing something and you want it to um, go right to, what I'm gonna do right now though, is I am going to turn the guides off. And I'm just gonna eyeball this up and um, do my best. And again, this is flexible. We can move it around if we'd like to. Okay, now um, let's say again, even if I wanted to uh, change my last one, I could. Um, you know, if I wanted to make this a bigger side and put in links to social media, that would be very easy to do. All I would need to do is I could click free transform, and I could make this one a little bit wider um, because I could save this one and put uh, my link to Twitter, Facebook, 
all those different social media kinds of features that are so much a part of people's websites now. Um, all right, and I can play around with this a little bit more. All right, so let's take a look. These are my buttons. This is my navigation bar so far. Um, now, again, if I wanted to come in now that I start to look at this, I can think, hmm, I don't really like how that is faded. And that's something that could be changed very easily. All right, so what do we need to do to um, make this all work a little bit more? Actually, how can we start to create some interactivity to it? Well, very easily. I'm on the buttons layer, and I want to go further into the button and apply um, some interactivity to this. So I double-click the button. And you can see what's happened now. If I pull out my timeline, I this comes up. And these are some default, these are actually built into Flash. These are some different things that we can apply to our button. Now, also I can see if I come up to this menu bar of, of the stage, I can see where I am. I'm working in the button. So when I want to leave this, I'll actually hit scene one. So I'm in the up state. Um, I want to insert a keyframe control insert keyframe okay actually this is a right click so I'm on a Mac so I hit control click I hit insert keyframe now I'm on over I want to change this color hmm let's see let's see let's see let's click this and maybe when you go over let's go bright why not over Okay, now to go down, and what this actually is, it's a down, it's a click. So let's see what's going to happen. We'll go um, control click again. We're going to insert another keyframe. We see this one's in down. Now we're going to change this color. Um, and so we can say when someone clicks on this, what happens? Um, why don't we make it darker? We'll lighten it up just a little bit. Okay, um, and then we have the hit. Now, what the hit refers to, and actually before I do that, I need to hit, come back. I need to insert a keyframe, control, insert, insert keyframe. And when I come to the hit, what I want to do is I actually want to make this bigger. Um, so what that means is as someone's mouse comes up close to this area, this is what will happen. So again, uh, if we come into the properties panel, and we click on this guy, what we want to do is we're just going to make him a little bit wider. So let's actually put him up um, 60 pixels. I'm sorry, up 20. Yeah, let's put him up 30 pixels. We'll put him to 170. Actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. That was 142, right? We want to change the height. All right, so let's change the height to, let's say, 60. 70. We can always change it around too. That's the beauty of this. All right, so there we have it. I come back to my first one to the up, and I can see it just is what it is. Now let's preview it and see what happens. I'm going to come back into scene one. I can see I'm out of there. I can see my regular um, navigation bar and my buttons. And again, the way that I got there was I just double clicked. I'm sorry, not there. I came in and I actually double clicked that instance and then I moved into the button okay all right <clears throat> so let's preview this let's come to control and let's test our movie and we're just gonna come to test and we click voila and we can see I'm rolling over now what we did was as I get close up to it see I'm not all the way there but the color changes now when we click okay and it looks like I actually made um, it bigger too upon the click so I could go in and change that um, and that would be pretty easy to do well one thing first too if I wanted to I could come in I could group this I could move all of this down okay let's say I said hmm I want to move this all down maybe I want to put a header in above um, and what I want to do now is I want to come further in and I want to see what I did to down up oh, look I came in I changed the size in down um, so if I click this right to here, um, do, 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 do. I think the height was, what was the height? Let's come, let's click off of here. Let's come back to up. Let's figure out if I click this, I need to select it. 
the height was 58. Okay, so I come back to down um, and I need to get my selection tool. I click on this and I forget already what the number was. I think it was 48. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, and now that I look at it too, I don't like this color too much. It's kind of boring. Let's actually click something. Let's choose something different. Maybe let's even go for some brown or something. Okay, and that's not the right size. Maybe it was 58. Ah, there we go. All right, let's test it again. Again, I'm going to come back to scene one, click off, control, and I want to come to test movie, test. Okay, there we have that. We have this, we have this. As we roll over, as we click, it turns brown. Okay, now let's say I wanted to add some type. Well, this would be pretty easy to do. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to name this type. And actually, we've all named it button type. Okay, and I want to just come on in here, and I'm going to just take my uh, text tool and what I want to do for this is just put it to classic text and we'll keep it at static too. We'll keep it um, static and you know I like I always love Georgia and I'm gonna make this font white and we're gonna keep it let's put it at 12 12 points whoopsie um, 12 all right and let's come on in and let's start putting in some some different things I'm gonna click this first one we have about, oh, way too small. All right, so obviously 12 doesn't work for this. Let's delete, let's do it again. Let me zoom in a little bit too. All right, so we come, we grab the type tool. We're gonna put this up, we'll say to 18, which is pretty big, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to work with it this way. About. Our font is white. We bring it on down. We move it over. Voila. All right, now we could come in, you know, edit, copy, edit, paste. All right, I could take this, move this on over, and come to my second one, grab my type, Highlight images. We could come on in here again, select this, edit copy, edit place, edit copy, edit paste in place, edit paste in place. Okay, and um, that one I didn't do paste in place, obviously, but we could do it that way, and then we could, you know, go about and uh, change these all around, change the words that we're using about images, come in, grab my T. Um, this one is updates. Um, this next one is writing. And um, whoopsie. All right, and then I'm gonna leave the last one blank uh, because what I want to do with it is I want to so I want to do this. I want to actually have the last one um, put the icons in to follow on Facebook and all that good stuff. All right, let's test it one more time. Control, test movie, test. Whoops, I think I did it in Flash Professional. All right, and I have the number 18. All right, so there we can see we just created a very simple, basic navigation bar um, and you know as I look at this too I can see that this has a little tiny line of the blue the greenish blue underneath it and that would be something that would be easy to change All right, but I think we get this idea of how this works and somehow I have the number 18 placed inside of here so thank you for listening that's our first example about how we can go about and create a navigation bar beginning to create a navigation bar very easily in Adobe Flash.